Okay, so uh, Angela, um, welcome back to the United States. Um, and uh, we had a great time in Finland. Oh my and gosh. <laughs> uh, this is this is really to. Uh, I'm supposed to be the interviewer. You're supposed to be the interview. Inter okay. Interview All you. right. But you feel free to jump in. I just want to start before we start. Just thank you again from the bottom of my oh. heart for this experience that was life changing. Not just the experience of seeing finished schools but to be connected to leaders all over the globe. Weren't they incredible? They're incredible just to see what they're doing and, and every, everywhere. So I just, I'm just so grateful for the whole well, experience. And I'll have to tell you, everybody was grateful to be able to meet you also. So like, it's <laughs> like, um, you know, Oh, Angela Myers is going to be there. Wow. <laughs> uh, too kind, too kind. So, so, so what are a couple takeaways? For you. So I've been processing this from like from the second we stood. So I just want to give you like I've been studying Finnish schools for 30 years. That's all you heard of. That was like the bar in both undergrad, graduate, in all the things like so you hear all this stuff and then you're thinking like, is it really that? Is it really that? And it was that and then some. And it was, it was, it took your breath away. And yet now that I'm back in the United States with pure, you know, pure pride in my country, I am absolutely proud to be an American. I'm proud of American teachers. I'm proud of American schools, but the system that we have, at least in our country has been broken since I began education. We've been talking about yep. reform. And so if I looked at what, what is the anecdote to that brokenness? It, it when you have um, kids stressed, teachers stressed, administrators stressed, system stressed, like there's, you don't, you know, you don't talk to an educator that says, I am so inspired. I am so like, this is the best year ever. You're hearing the exact opposite. When you dig that down, I think there's three things that we can learn um, all over the world, but specifically in the United States um, that I could summarize what I gained from actually being in embedded in the Finnish system from we were at all these different sites from early childhood all the way to university to look at all different populations whether it's from the lens of stem and robotics to the lens of um, real world skills to every student from special education on we got to see a big a big like sample size if you will we didn't just go to one school and get it from there and I, I wrote about this, but I will summarize it here in three different points. The first point is education matters. So let me clarify that because when we look at education, the root word of educate means to lead out. It is Latin for to bring forth. That is the essence and the focus of the entire system, no matter where you enter the system or what perspective you look at it. There is a belief that every single student matters and that every single student is and will be a contributing citizen. And our job as educators is to lead that out. Our job as a system is to lead that out. So the entire focus was what do we do? What conditions do we create to bring the best of our students every single day? Rather than the focus in our system is what can we dump in? What can we dump in? What can we cover? What can we mark that we covered? What can we you know, get from them as it relates to what we dumped in? And it is the complete opposite. So I wondered what you thought about that. So you, you really, you know, that, that was such a, a major thing that um, I remember one teacher, actually, I think it was at the university was saying, yeah. In our country, we don't feel that we can let any one person go to waste. We need every single person to contribute. And they make every person feel yes. like that they person matter. matters and can contribute. Yes. It was incredible. Yeah. And from a brand perspective, when the minister spoke to us, her first statement was education is our brand. There's nothing else that we hold more precious than our human capital. It is something that is absolutely our best resource as a country, as, an, as a nation, that we believe in our people, we need our people, and every investment that we make, the number one priority is for that investment to be in the system 
that nurtures our people from the very beginning of their life all the way to, to launching what, what their best contribution is going to be. Education is our brand. That is very different than, than oh, we have an education system along with da 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 da. Um, they put their money where their mouth is. If education matters, every, and they continue to say investment, this is an investment, this is an investment, not just in the individual, but in the collective, and we will reap the rewards or the return on investment is great. And we see that in every industry, in yep. every aspect of our community. It was breathtaking. Like And, I was and one of the things was kind of in, interesting <laughs> about that to me is that if you look as a percentage of of, of their economy, yeah. it's not like they, they put much more or any more money right. into education than we do we, in the U.S. and in, I guess in some other countries also. We still put a lot of money into education. It's right. the whole understanding that that money in education is to develop people. Yes, yes. <laughs> and that's what it is. It is like when I look at you know, I, I hesitate often to compare systems because it's apples and oranges, but there is a decision at the highest level to the building level of where money goes. And it doesn't go into programs and it doesn't go into products and it doesn't go into mass testing. It goes into whatever advances learning in people. And that is just a really, really clear shift. So that's the first point. The second point is teachers matter. And, and that was like, it brought me to tears when in every, the first time I heard it, it brought me to tears. But the 10th time that I heard it from business leaders, from supportive um, companies, from the ministry, all the way to the principals at the building, every question that we asked, every sort of like, well, let's play the devil's advocate. What about this? What about this? Was always answered with this statement. We trust teachers. It just, look, it just gave me goosebumps. <laughs> we trust teachers. We trust our teachers. We've invested in the best of who they are. We've supported their education, their strength, their expertise. Why on earth would we not trust them? So everything that would be questioned um, or, or could be pushed back on, it was like, oh, well, that's a decision for the teachers. Well, we trust the teachers. And if I think of, especially in the last, maybe five years, but definitely two. The thing that teachers want most is for not only their leaders, their building leaders, their principals, their district, but for the, the, the collective community to believe in them and actually trust them to do their job. And what that would do, not only for morale, but what that would do for productivity, for attrition, for recruitment, for everything. If you're going to go into a job and give your entire heart and mind and then be questioned about everything you do, then it's, it's a really hard sell as a brand to say, give your life to education. So did you feel that as well? I mean, I know you heard multiple people when we were address when they were addressing us, the default was we trust the teachers. We trust well, you know, teachers. sometimes I'm a little sarcastic, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so I as you're talking, I'm thinking, well, we trust our teachers as long as they keep test scores up, as long as they do exactly what we say, we trust them. And it's like, but that's not trust. No. You know, no. Okay, that's control. That's very right. different from trust in fin in in Finland. And and I get this impression that, um, you know, people from other countries, you know, because we had people from Portugal, um, Australia, uh, Scotland, yeah. in, yep. uh, India. Yep. You yep. know, they were impressed by this also. That, Absolutely. you know, as as you brought up, if you ask. Um, the assistant mayor of education about, well, shouldn't teacher, right. you know, shouldn't we be doing this in the classroom? It was like, well, that's really up to the teachers to decide. I shouldn't be making that decision. Not a lot. Like we trust the teachers. That's a teacher decision. Why would we get involved at the level? We don't know what, what teachers know. Like it was just in the same way. I feel that um, we have given trust to the medical profession in many, many instances, specifically, like you don't question a doctor. Like I was at the dentist today and like, I'm trusting the dentist. Like I'm not there to, to judge and critique and, and tell the dentist what to do. Like, I understand that he went to school for this and that he studied this and that this is his every waking life. And so I'm laying in the chair, deciding not to argue with the dentist, but you know, like, it's just, there's this deep, like 
unequivocal trust for professionals in many fields in our, our country from medicine to like law to whatever. And I'm not saying there's not, you know, bad characters in every industry, but there isn't that same default respect to teachers. And so that is, that is why many of them, you know, are professional, but don't feel like they're treated as professionals. And so I just like, that was, I wanted to record that and just play that for all the teachers that I work with and touch and just like, can you imagine working for not only an administrator, but working for a community and working for a country at the country level that have the same respect and admiration and reverence for what you do every single day on behalf of our most vulnerable citizens. So it was just beyond refreshing. Mm -hmm. And the teachers in turn right. use utilize that trust Yes. and convey it back to the students. So the 100%. teachers trust their students as well. Yes, so that brings me to my third point. Oh. So education matters, absolutely, at the fullest sense. Teachers matter at the deepest, most prolific sense. And the third is learning matters. And I want to clarify because we would hear in every school that we would go in in the US, and there's wonderful schools in the US, don't get me wrong. I'm talking about the difference between individual teachers or individual schools to consistency, consistency throughout the system. And that's what was the big glaring difference is that I've seen all of these behaviors. I've seen examples of these practices from STEM infusion to robotics to um, real life learning, problem solving teams. You see that, but you see it in pockets. You don't see this as the consistent default way. And I think one of the things we get confused is the difference between teaching and advancing learning. There is an understanding that if I taught it and I can check it off and I can show you that I taught it, that learning is just an automatic. When we put our focus on what we're going to teach, how we're going to teach, when we're going to teach it, at, at what time we're going to teach it and what we're going to say while we're teaching it, that's important. But that's different than being cultivators of learning deliberately, intently creating conditions where learning is inevitable, biologically, um, physically, mentally, socially. And that's what we saw when you walked in from the first building to the 10th building, learning was oozing out of the pores of the walls. Literally, kids were everywhere. And you would think that 14 adults from different countries walking through the middle of an elementary school would cause like kids to step back and go like, whoa, what is this? They were not phased by us. They were not phased by anybody. There was another class that walked through in the middle of learning. The kids just kept learning in every corner and literally every nook. They were what we wish for. They were self-directed. They were self-aware. They were accountable. They were thoughtful. If you went and talked to them about what they were doing, they could not only tell you what they were doing, they could tell you why they were doing it. Learning was at the forefront of everything. It was, it was like, I, I, it was, it was joyful. And that was the other, that's the, the repercussion or the result of conditions of learning being met like the same as you were a gardener and you create these conditions for seeds to grow. And when they grow, it's just the most beautiful breathtaking, breathtaking thing. And that's what it was like. It was like walking into this garden of learning and all of these, all of these learners, you could see just seeds just popping up all over. They were different size and different rates and different heights. But the beauty of watching them bloom was just breathtaking, literally breathtaking. And I didn't hear any directives that, um, because learning was just there, period. So you didn't hear all the things that we do to force learning. Like you need to turn around, you need to pay attention, you need to do this, you need to be quiet, you need to stand in line. There's so many directives that a young person gets in their mind, all for the sake of learning, instead of just looking at all that energy and effort we put into conformity and, and correctness and you know standing in a row and walking in a line and being in your box and doing what I say when I say it, if we just put that energy to create the conditions, you can literally walk away because it was so 
You even had to look in the room to see which person was the teacher. At many times, especially at high school, I was like, hmm, is that the teacher? I don't know, maybe I'll go up to her because they're just like facilitators of learning. Like they built this garden and they know that the plants are gonna bloom and they're just watching it. And it was, oh, I can't, it just takes my breath away. So your thoughts on that, education matters, teachers matter, learning matters, boom, that's it. Yeah, and so I'm going to actually, so there were, the, you know, we saw a, a few slideshows also from, yeah. Yeah. you know, at the different schools and there were like yeah. these two slides that, yeah. you know, that kind of exemplify that. So I'm going to like share my yeah. screen right. here, Perfect. okay? So it's like, so this first one, you look at yeah. these two images on the right and you look at traditionally the way we, we, we look at school, like there's literature. Yeah. Oh, now we're going to do geometry. Oh, now we're going to do art. Yeah. Well, not in the U.S. We don't do much art, but now we're going to do biology. Okay. Now we're going to do history. Okay. And then you look at the real life thing. It's, it's a lot messier and everything is kind of combined. And, and, you know, the, the, these bullet points on the left where, um, you know, you're pointing to a really inclusive environment, yeah. not just yeah. like, oh, we're going to segregate these kids because they're a little yeah. bit faster. We're going to take these kids out because for some, you know, uh, they've got behavioral issues. It's like they, they, they pull everybody together and they make it more like a real life situation. And then, you know, oh, so that's this, sorry, I went the wrong way. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So then the, the other thing is, is they're doing this based on, you know, yeah. real life phenomenon. Okay. Yeah. So the students, when they're learning, they're looking at a topic that, that interests them in a holistic way, which is much more student centered. Yeah. It's very active. The students are working in real world environment. And while they're learning all these other academic skills, they're yeah. also developing their 24. Well, what they, you know, I hate the term 21st right. century skills, I but know. they're building I know. collaboration, yeah. communication, creativity, and critical thinking. And yeah. And as you point out, there are no behavioral issues because, right. you know, the kids are just in, in you know, immersed yeah. and engaged yeah. in what they're doing. And yeah. we have this, this high level of trust and you've trusted the teachers and the whole society has put this together and said, you know, edu you know, we need to train these kids yeah. to fulfill the roles that we won't even, we don't even know what they are right now, but they're going to have roles for the rest of their lives. But some of the biggest things that they're needing to going to be able their need to be able to do is to meet yeah. the challenges whatever they are that they're going to be facing for the rest of their lives the challenges that challenge them individually and the challenges that challenge society and we need to prepare them prepare them for that and that's what the schools do a hundred percent there wasn't just uh self-direction and self-reflection and self-awareness those elements that that we want a, an independent we want a independent, free thinking, um, mindful citizenry. We don't want dependence where we're sitting there waiting for someone to say, you're only doing this because I told you to do it. You don't right. see a problem and fix it. Um, but there was this confidence in the independence. Like the, the fact that I'm not looking at another adult every five seconds to like, I'm done. So I look at the adult, like, what do I do next? That there was just like, oh, well, we'll just do this and we'll just do this and we're doing this and we're doing this. And it was just this seamless, like harmony of, of learning and challenge. And it wasn't that. And so the slide that I thought you were going to share, Mitch, and this is oh. like telltale in, in both students and teachers is one of the teachers was prevent presenting an innovative project that they did with the university. Right. And they had, um, it was the first year. And I don't even remember what the project was, some something with robotics or something. Right. They, and, they got micro bits and yes, nobody yes, knew how yes. to program the micro bits. Yes. And so what and do you do? Think of a school here, you know, like you're getting a new technology. Nobody yes. in the school knows how to use the technology. What would we what 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 do you do? Absolutely. And what they do? And so they they um, had their success rate. They showed, and we're like thinking, oh my gosh, it's going to be eighty percent success rate in year one. Like he's sharing this with like global leaders from all over the world, and the success rate was four percent. Right. And we all just were like, oh, you know, like we took it. Took <laughs> and you were brave enough to say, like, um, is this the right slide? He didn't say it. <laughs> is this the right slide? Is this what you're like? celebrating he was proud of it he was celebrating 
because what went on is the 4% that actually stuck with it, it rippled and advanced and exploded the next year and the next year that you would rather have 4% all in than 80% that just did it for the heck of it. And it was just the attitude and the mindset that, well, we learned from it. Well, we figured out new things and we did better the next year. We figured out what wasn't working and what was working. So we could concentrate on the stuff that was working. That's right. Where if you looked at a university school project that got 4% success rate, it would be cut just like that. Well, that was a failure. That was a failure. And you saw that same. So I was, I had videotaped this group of young, uh, I think they were grade six or grade seven, and they had programmed their robot car to go in a circle around these rocks. And they were laughing because they're like getting ready for the test to like show me like, oh, this robot, we worked, you know, for weeks trying to pro and the robot like went the opposite way, like just went away from the rocks at all. And the, and the um, girls and the thing, they were like, oh, well, you know what, when you weren't looking, it did work. So we just got to go back and tweak it a little bit. They weren't embarrassed that it didn't work. They weren't like, hesitant. They were like, all right, that didn't work. Something is wrong. We'll go back to the computer, try it out. Mm -hmm. Like there is no sense of failure when you're looking at learning. Failure is a part of learning. Like if you're not failing and you're not challenged and you're not struggling with something, then learning isn't advancing. You're just memorizing. So it was just all the way up from the youngest kids all the way to high school in, in robotics are looking at my, we're planning to fail. Like yep. we're, we're intending to fail. Like there's no, like 4% is better than 0%, you know, like we got this and we're going to celebrate that, build on it, expand that and move on. And isn't that the essence of learning? It's not just the essence yep. of innovation. That's the essence of learning. Fail, yep. fail fast, get right back up, try it again, reflect on it. And you have such risk averse students but you mm-hmm. also have risk averse teachers and you have risk averse leaders. We're so, so renowned about a perfect score or a perfect percentage or a perfect whatever assessment we're doing that we forget in perfection, um, we lose the most important thing, which is learning. Yep. So, yeah. So, um, so how, I guess we're, we're almost up to 10 minutes, right? Yes, yeah. <laughs> uh, we were going to make this short, but of course, um, you know, we, we, we didn't, but, but that's yeah. how we learn, right? This isn't a failure. This is, this yeah. is part of the learning. So, so where do you take this? I know this is, we're past time, but uh, where do you take this now oh. that you've seen this? So that is the hardest question because the last thing I want to do is add more pressure and, and be negative about, the school systems, because they're getting hammered. I'm speaking specifically for the USA, um, but any school systems, like I work all over the world. So the last thing you want to do is go in and say like, ah, look at these guys, you should be this because in, um, oh, shoot, I'm so sorry, that is my daughter calling at the most inappropriate time, but that's okay. Um, so it isn't, it isn't that you want to say like, you're doing it wrong. My, you lead with what you believe is best intention. I believe in my heart, working with hundreds of thousands of teachers a year for the last 30 years, that every teacher wants joyous learning, that every teacher wants to give their all and do their Mm -hmm. best and be respected for not only their successes. Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. That's okay. I'm getting texted too. Yeah, Um, let me text her and tell her, okay, that I got to call her back. Okay. One second. Yeah, me too. (laughs) Okay, good, 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 good. This is real life, right? Yep. This is real life. All right. Um, okay, perfect. Um, so I think that's important. So I've been hesitant, um, because it's really easy to say like, you guys are here. Finland also has very little diversity. And yes, they're handling diversity and they're welcoming diversity, but it's really easy when you have a neighborhood of children that are about the same, that have the same kind of support. It's a country of 5 million, which we have that in. That's half the size of New York City. That's exactly right. Right. So you're not comparing apples to apples. So that's unfair. Um, and so I, I, and there's many things that teachers can't control. There's no teacher that I've ever met, no leader that I've ever met sa- that says all of this testing that we're doing is making me a better teacher and making kids more excited in learning. 
And yet we continue to bring more tests for different reasons early on, test for the test for the test. And so this obsession with with correctness and this obsession with that if we cover it, they've learned it, has got to stop at every every single level. Because at the end, the, the ones who suffer the most are the teachers and the students. Right. Because no teacher that that is like, this is the most joyous time. We're pre-testing, we're doing the end of the chapter test. We're doing, they want to get through that so they can get to real learning. I also think there's a lot to be said in teacher preparation. I look at even 35 years back, my teacher preparation had zero conversations, zero conversations about creating conditions of learning. Mm -hmm. Learning talked about less than 1% of the time. Everything was about teaching methodology, teaching strategy, teaching technology, teaching whatever. It was all about what I did in the delivery of instruction, which is important, but it wasn't about what we do to make sure and ensure that learning advances because of the conditions that we've mm -hmm. created. And there's a balance between that. Yep. So I think there are real changes that we can make in conversation, but I think bringing, I know this is, I'm broken record and not shocking, but at the end of the day, no matter what lens you look through, students, teachers, in you know, community, government, mattering is the the core foundational element. Mattering must be the agenda, not an agenda. It must be the agenda. And what do we do to make the human beings in this system that are not just there for a moment, but their entire lifetime is impacted, feel and know that they matter, that they have value, that their contribution is needed. And that's why we're doing X, Y, Z. Yep. Yep. So that's my final thought. Yeah. So I'm I'm sticking with the mattering stuff. <laughs> right, I agree. Yeah, and I'm and I'm going to and I'm going to stick with with fun as part of that. Yeah, it is. Yeah. It's yep. huge. Yeah, to, there's nothing more joyous and more like fulfilling. One of the words that one of the um, I think it was the uh, the vice mayor said is Finland got voted the happiest nation on right. the planet. Yeah, yep. yep. like three years in a row. Three years in a row. But she said this is more than happiness. This is fulfillment and contentment, where the, the outcome of that is happy human beings. Yep. When you are fulfilled, when you are content, when you are satisfied with the effort that you've put in, that's the part of mattering that we're missing. Because when we seek to live a fulfilled, significant life, then we're, we're automatically going to be happy. And let's bring that to the world. Yeah. Yeah. So okay. my message is the same. It hasn't changed. You matter. What we're doing matters. Teachers matter. The system matters. And we have to take that seriously beyond. I'm not trying to make somebody feel better by telling them that there's an urgency and there's so much um, what I call ROI risk of ignoring. Um, mm -hmm. That's the ROI I'm concerned about. Yep. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Talk uh, to you soon. Okay. okay. All right. <laughs>